In this problem, you could see um, I got my measurements for the lady who's looking into the mirror. Uh, she is 1.6 meters tall. And from the top of her head to her eyes is 0.1 meter, if you could barely see that measurement right up there. So that means from her eyes to her feet is going to be the next 1.5 meters. So uh, the best way to do this is to just draw a mirror just from the get go and go ahead and put the backing onto the mirror so you know it's stationary and nothing gets reflected on that end. And you're going to just use the law of reflection twice. So two points of interest is the top of the head and the bottom of the feet. Everything else you can assume falls within the um, within the window in which the law of reflection acts. So what's really important is what light enters the eyes. If you want to, if, if she wants to see her whole body from her eyes, where, which is the observer here, um, she wants to know what is the minimum height of the mirror and how far off the ground it needs to be in order to see her height. So she's gonna hang up a mirror and she's short on cash. So she's trying to find the shortest mirror possible to see her whole body. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the law of reflection to look at the top of her head. And this takes a little bit of artwork and just foresight. And you're going to try to go halfway from her head to her eyes as you hit the mirror. Knowing the law of reflection is going to then um, uh, reflect off that same angle to the normal as the incoming light. The only light that we really care about is the light that goes into her eyes. So this angle right here is going to be twice that, that in which you look at the law of reflection. The incoming light um, angle with respect to the perpendicular of the mirror is equal to the outgoing light with respect to the perpendicular of the mirror. So you can see that the perpendicular is right here where the dotted line is that I kind of crudely showed here. At the same time, um, so we'll go ahead and mark this. This is where the light Find, uh, eventually hits the mirror. Now we're going to also do the same thing for her feet. And again, foreshadowing is necessary or foresight is necessary here. Um, you need to figure out where the light is going to hit from the foot in which it will hit her eyes. And it seems like around there is a good determination. Okay, good place in which it will uh, bounce off the mirror and hit her eyes. So the mirror is going to stop there. Uh, so theoretically speaking, she will only need this much of a mirror this high off the ground in order to see her body. How do you figure that out? Well, I guess it's a little bit of logic. Now, since the light from the top of her head goes halfway down to her eyes and then the rest of the way to her eyes as it bounces back to get into her eyes so she can see herself, that's going to be the measurement of 0.1 meters divided by two. So this will be about 0.6 meters from the top of her head, or sorry, 0 0.5, 0 0.05 meters from the top of her head. Now she is 1.60 meters tall. So 1.60 meters minus 0 0.05 meters is where the mirror's top needs to be. That ends up being 1.55 meters. Now from the bottom of her feet, which this is at a point of zero meters, we know that the light is gonna travel halfway up from her foot to her eye, hit the mirror, then travel the other half towards her eye. And that's why she can see that light coming from her foot. So if her foot to her eye is 1.5 meters of distance, so that's basically her height minus her eyes to the top of her head, that's a 1.5 meter distance. We can imagine that this right here is then going to be 0 0.75 meters. So in effect, we answered both questions there. Um, the mirror must be 0 0.75 meters off the ground. And the mirror's height needs to be 1.55 minus 0 0.75 meters. And that comes out to be 
0.8 meters tall, you could say. Now let's look at the coincidence here, which is not really a coincidence anyways, but it's going to be half this lady's height. So that means that uh, whatever her height might be, and this is the general rule, if you are one meter tall, then the most mirror you need is 0.5 meters. If you're two meters tall, the most uh, uh, mirror you actually need, or the least amount of mirror that you need is one meter only, half of your height. And this always is the case for any height person. So a little bit of a benefit to you uh, shorter folks out there, you need less mirror to see your whole body. So you save a little bit of money there. Okay, um, the next part is, you know, just to convince you that all other parts of her body are going to be seen within the mirror. Let's take another piece of light coming from her hand. So she has like a flashlight or whatever. And uh, the only part of that light ray that reflects off her hands that matter is the one that goes to her eyes. Now, using the law of reflection, uh, that light needs to go halfway up from her hand to the mirror, and then the other half has to go from the mirror to her eyes. And so that falls within this range here. What about the, you know, what about her belly, right? Her belly, she wants to see that. Same thing, halfway from that point to her eyes and then the rest of the way to her eyes. So that falls within that same range. So her whole body is viewable uh, in this part of the mirror using that law of reflection. Now, the next part I want to go over, so this problem is basically done, but the next part I want to go over is, can you see your whole body if you are different distances away? And this is an interesting little concept. So you get a, a little extra help here. Let's say you have a mirror and I'm going to give you two mirrors actually. Okay. Uh, one of the mirrors you're going to be very close to. So let's just say you are right here. You're standing very high up against the mirror. And the mirror is going to be half your body length. So it's going to be right here and here. Okay. Next situation is you're very far away. So that can be simulated with you also being smaller. And you got the mirror, which is also half your body length. So the question is, can a mirror be half your body length and still be in your whole body still be visible at any distance using the law of reflection? And the answer is yes. And you can try this out for yourself. So again, law of reflection states that the top of the head needs to hit the mirror at an angle normal to the mirror's plane and reflect at that same angle normal to the mirror's plane. Now the same thing is going to go for the foot. And because of, you know, she's very close up, that angle is just going to be a lot larger. So you got a large angle to uh, normal to the mirror's plane. But then you also have a reflection that is a large angle normal to the mirror's plane. So even when you're close up, that law of reflection says that you can see your whole body with a half body length mirror. Now this probably doesn't do it justice, but if you're far away, you, it's the same thing. Again, a very small angle of incidence and a very small angle of reflection still holds true to where you could see your head with a mirror that's slightly below your forehead or the top of your head. What about your feet? Same thing. You got a pretty small angle of incidence and a pretty small angle of reflection and I could have drawn that better. So let's put that mirror has to be a little bit bigger. So that mirror can still be half your body length and see your whole body no matter what distance you are. Try this at home, get a, get a mirror. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty large. It could be a handheld mirror. And you can see a certain part of your body, like your whole face down to your neck, or maybe the top of your head down to your chest. Now you can hold that mirror up very close to your eyes, or you can hold that mirror very far, have a friend take that mirror very far away from you. You could still see that same portion of your body if angled correctly. It's a very interesting aspect of reflectivity. Anyway, that's the solution to the problem right here.